Greetings, my fellow of the curse. Are you feeling a little down? You know, maybe a tiny bit upset? You got a little frown in your face, perhaps? Well, you're in utmost luck as you came to the right place. Because I know a game that will turn your sadness into an endless depressing void. In, in a good way, in, in, in Minecraft. So let me ask you a question, young fella. Do you like adventures? Do you like collecting cool and shiny items? How about dressing? Impressing. How about dying? You like that? What about dying by being beaten to death by dog park tweakers? Unintentionally falling into your mother's plate? Taking a wrong turn in the dark? Or maybe being a little crispy? Well, you could relive all of those life-changing events in the beautiful world of Dark Souls 2. Everybody has heard about Dark Souls, so it's by no means an obscure niche game series that it once was. The very first entering the series as we know it was Demon's Souls, released in 2009 by From Software. It's a series of action RPG games with a focus on hardcore grounded and story-driven experience and not so grounded on dark fantasy world, or so they say. In reality, it's a series of action RPG games with a focus on shaving your nuts with a sledgehammer. You have probably either played a Souls game, watched the funny Rage Dark Souls compilation 4925 on YouTube, or maybe even got introduced to the series through Elden Ring, which is, in all but name, the latest installment in the series. Well, if you weren't fortunate enough to spend any time at all around the Souls Born Ring Arrow core community, you would know that they really don't like each other. They usually pick one favorite game that From Software made and split away into a camp from where they actively hated other Souls games. Some of the most common opinions you will run into are something something Bloodborne fans try not to say it's the best Souls game for 15 seconds challenge impossible, Dark Souls 1 purists try not to gatekeep the whole series saying that every other game in the series is worse, Sekiro haters try their best not to write a coke essay on the game every time they sneeze, and so on. But one of the most well-documented historical skirmishes is the Great Siege of Dark Souls 2, a grand ongoing conflict where fans of every single Souls game unanimously shit on Dark Souls 2. But what is the root of such disdain? Is the hate really justified? Or is it just large-scale copium? Or maybe Dark Souls 2 is simply a bad game? If these are any of the questions that you have in mind, you came to the wrong place, because all you will witness today is me dick-riding the last drop of seed out of Dark Souls 2. That's right, Dark Souls 2 is my personal favorite in the series, and thus is the one I picked for my review. You may not like the game, but that's okay. It's legal to be wrong, just as it is legal to eat your own stew, but who am I to judge? So, let's get down to business and talk about this ultimate work of art. But before I do that, let me shamelessly self-promote myself in my own video and remind you guys that I stream almost daily here on my YouTube channel, where I play literally everything while interacting with you beautiful people. Funny moments, not guaranteed. Also, comment down your favorite Souls game and why, and I will make sure to read it and judge the living shit out of you, while also gaslighting you into thinking you're wrong, regardless of what you type really. Just kidding, back to Dark Souls 2. Right after I tell you guys about it, a tiny little tank game that you may or may not have heard about. That was of course sarcasm because we're talking about War Thunder, the most comprehensive vehicle combat game ever made. You like tanks, you like planes, you like choppers and ships, we got it all in the dynamic combined arms PvP battles. Every single vehicle is extremely detailed and is based on real life models, not just in regards to looks but performance too. Speaking of the vehicles, they're based on war machines spanning 100 years of development, earliest being 1920s, now all the way to the present day. What was that? You prefer arcade gameplay over realism? Doesn't matter because we got game modes suited for everybody. Be it casual, fast and action-packed or realistic and tactical, it's all up to the player. My favorite part of the game is the insane level of customization and gorgeous visuals. So what are you waiting for? Play it for free now on PC, Xbox Series X and S, PS5 or the previous console generations using my link in the description. All new players and those who haven't played for 6 months will get a large bonus pack which includes premium vehicles, premium account, a bunch of cosmetics and a whole lot more. Now back to the video. The game starts you off with a cutscene, which in a classic From Software fashion can only be described as an art project type film, where nothing really makes sense. Faces melt, teeth disappear, muffs ignite, warp hole opens, and of course... You then wake up in a place called Things Betwixt. Rugged, rotten, nameless, and bitchless, and stinky, you embark on your epic adventure, but not before you realize your settings are absolute dog shit. So let's talk about that first. There are two versions of Dark Souls 2, the vanilla game that you would have to buy alongside three separate DLCs and Scholar of the First Sin version that comes pre-packaged with all the DLCs. What they don't tell you is that they are considered to be separate games. So say if you own Scholar Edition and your friend owns Vanilla Edition and your other friend is diagnosed with Chlamydia, well in that case you guys cannot play together. Ultimately, I recommend you get Scholar of the First Sin Edition, as that is the current standard version that still has a sizable multiplayer community still playing it. While the vanilla is dead and buried, but you should keep in mind that Scholar 
Scholar changed a lot of things from vanilla, especially when it comes to enemy placement. Scholar decided to insanely wreck up the difficulty by placing as many enemies as possible where the other was wouldn't be, which is a very common complaint you hear. So if extreme challenge is not something you meet with a smile and a rock hard cock, then you should probably get vanilla Dark Souls 2 instead. Anyways, controls. If you use a controller, good for you, you're all set. Here's your um unremarkably silly metal and don't care. Now if you're a principled keyboard user like myself, there are important control changes that I recommend you make. You may notice that the game has insane input delay. What the fuck? The entire reason for that is the broken and garbage double clicking function that the game uses for normal and power attacks by default. So what I recommend you do is disable double clicking and rebind your power attack buttons to shift click instead of double clicks. And that's it, except it's not, because for some unknown PC port blows reasons, it auto resets this particular setting every time you launch the game, even though it doesn't tell you so in the options. Thus, what you have to do is every single time you launch the game, you have to enable double clicking again and disable it again. No other rebinding is needed. Now, for the rest of the binding, is up to your suspicious preference. Back to the video game, you move a muscle and you instantly get gangbanged by a bunch of smelly monkeys, you move a couple of inches to the left and get eaten by a fat troll. Yeah baby, it's Dark Souls time. Move further until you find a hobbit hut filled with a bunch of hotties and that's where you get to showcase your creativity by morphing your character. You pick your starting class, a free gift and personalize your appearance to make the most beautiful person imaginable. Classes are basically directions you want to take with your build in the future. All they do is give you starting gear and stats that you cannot change later. Even if you try to respec your character, you won't be able to go lower with any stat that your starting class has. For example, if you pick Sorcerer, uh, first of all, KILL YOURSELF! Second of all, you will start with 14 intelligence. And if later down the line, you realize that Sorcerer is for losers, you won't be able to respec those 14 points elsewhere. If you're unsure with what class you want to be in the future, you can go for the Prime, the class that spawns you with absolutely nothing, which also allows you to respec with full freedom throughout the game. Once you're done jerking off into the mirror, you're free to roam this earth. You see your first bonfire which is, in typical Dark Souls fashion, serves as your checkpoints, fast travel beacons, healing stations, and overall the best sight you can hope for in this otherwise downright dispiriting game. You then get to pass through your first stage, which serves as a tutorial, with signs explaining how to perform the most basic of actions. Savor this moment, because this is the first and only time the game will ever bother explaining anything to you. You battle the shambling undead, fail to make a jump that requires a four-button combination, by the way, find the nest of birds, and crawl your goofy ass out of the dark cave only to be met with the most gracious sight in the entire game, Majula. Majula is your hub filled with friendly NPCs, traders, and acts as a safe zone, well, kinda. It's also a place where you will run into Emerald Herald. Are you the next monarch? Or merely a pawn of fate? She guides you? Bearer of the curse. On September 11th, 2001, levels you up, fixes you some drinks, and fills you with words of motivation. Bearer of the curse. You are fucked. And as of right this instant, you're free to explore the open world of Dark Souls 2. There are numerous weapons, armor sets, spells, and items, all of which can be mixed and matched with the build of your choice. Every weapon scales with a specific stat. Like for example, a wing spear is a weapon that scales best with the level of your dexterity, and so on. You can also alter scaling of weapons by applying elemental stones to them, so that they fit your build better. You can also dual wield, two hand or one hand any weapon, block, parry, shield bash, backstab, dodge, and so on. It all sounds simple on surface, but there are a lot of stats and details that need a video of its own, plus a real giga chat souls player literally ignores all of that and just plays the game the way they want to. If you want more details, you can almost look them up online, on websites such as Fextra Life. Well, that is when they're not too busy forcing their Twitch broadcast to appear in your fucking nightlight. Anyways, you can stay in Majula for a bit and explore for secrets as there are plenty to find. I suggest to always talk to every single friendly NPC you find up until the point where you exhaust their dialogue, effectively lobotomizing them. Most NPCs actually have undisclosed quests that are triggered by letting them pour their heart out for you that usually end in great rewards in the end. Obviously, you shouldn't kill NPCs as their deaths are permanent and irreversible, sort of. The game also has a faction mechanic known as Covenants, where you can join a clan of sorts, each with their own ideals, benefits and goals, but almost all of them are multiplayer related. Well, that was quite a bit to process, now let's get back to adventuring.
Let's assume you went to the forest of the fallen giants first, as most players do. You quickly realize that everything in this game wants you dead. Even the weakest enemies bite larger chunks out of your health pool than your home's tap water. And after you inevitably die, you notice three things. First, all of your souls, which is your money, perished. Second, you now look like somebody who donates to TikTok NPCs. And third, all the enemies respond. You see, your protagonist is cursed with the undeath. Every time you die, you become more and more hollow version of yourself, and your maximum health decreases. To reverse this process and become human again, you need to use a human effigy. It can be bought or found. When you respawn, your souls will remain at the location of your death, and you have one chance to retrieve them. If you die before you pick them up, you lose them for good. That's why it's always a very good idea to spend your souls as frequently as possible and avoid hoarding that big amount of them, as that can backfire in the worst way imaginable. And you acquire souls by killing and or finding soul items. The world of Dark Souls 2 is very open. There are numerous amounts of secrets, shortcuts, hidden treasures, and bosses, all of which are adored with a nice amount of gang-banging monstrosities eager to taste what you ate for yesterday's breakfast. You will also frequently run into friendly NPCs who also have journeys of their own and got very interesting stories to tell. For example, you'll meet Pate. Hello there, traveler. You got a big dick, sir. I like big dicks. He will inform you of treasure nearby, which ends up being a trap. Upon returning to Pate, he is shocked to see you alive, and as a token of apology, he rewards you with a white soapstone. This is your primary multiplayer co-op item. In Dark Souls 2, the way multiplayer works is that every single player has their own world. If you and your friend have a similar soul level and memory, and arrive at the same place in each other's worlds, and one of you places down a white soap sign, it will appear in the world of the other player, as long as he's human. And if he interacts with it, he will summon you to his world. Upon being summoned to your friend's world, you look like you're made out of bodily fluids, and now you get to play the entire stage with your friend up until you defeat the stage's boss. Keep in mind that any progress you do in your friend's world will not apply to your world. So if you want to progress together with a friend, then you will have to clear the stage twice, once in your world, and then once in your friend's world. It's called the first scene, you can have up to four co-op partners in a single world. Once the stage's boss is defeated, you are now no longer able to summon co-op partners with a large soapstone to that stage. In which case, you can use a small soapstone, which still summons your fuck buddy, but for a limited time. But you see, co-op isn't the only multiplayer interaction you can have. Introducing the coolest part of the game, invasions. At any time, you can invade other players in their own worlds who are minding their own business. By using a correct red eye orb, you can invade a player's world who is currently on the same stage where you use the item. When invading, you cannot use healing items and your goal is to kill the player, ultimately ruining his fucking day. Once the target is deleted, you will be rewarded and returned back to your own world. You can also have consensual PvP by either placing red signs on the ground, which can be summoned by other players, or go and duel your faction members at the Covenant HQ. The levers are huge and vary from one another significantly, each is very memorable and has a completely different color scheme and theme. You move from gothic bastions to rundown castle ruins, snowy wastelands, underground pirate coves, lava lands, poisonville, and many 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 more locations. Each locale is populated with its own set of enemies, weapons, items, as well as big ugly bastards. The game is massive and is filled with content, storytelling elements, fantastic music, and lots of love and attention to detail, making this grueling and unforgiving game something you cannot stop playing, as with every death you get more and more infuriated. But you can't just let that death slide, so now you tell yourself, just one more try. Now, 40 tries later. The game is indeed very difficult, as a lot of the elements in this game are intentionally designed to torture you, especially for a first-time playthrough, and even furthermore, if this is your very first introduction to the Soul series, like it was for me, Dark Souls 2 will be the ultimate test for your patience and self-restraint from damaging your hardware. All this happens to you on some of the most beautiful landscapes the Soul series has to offer. Visually, the game proves that you can still make a very colorful, diverse, and vivid world to represent a place that went through the apocalypse making these locations all the more memorable, which again, definitely helps to distract the player with gorgeous sightseeing while they're getting pummeled full of cock. Well, overall, Dark Souls 2 is a fantastic self-torture simulator that I recommend every CBT enjoyer to give a shot. Thank you so much for watching this cringy review. Big thanks again to War Thunder for sponsoring the video, and don't forget to check out my link in the description to get a large bonus pack, which includes a lot of awesome and limited content for new players and those who haven't played for at least 6 months. And do let me know what other games you would like me to take a look at next. Now have a good one. Bearer of the curse, you have done it. You have made it to the end of the video. I hope now you know that I am the best souls waifu. Don't you dare disagree, you gay little bitch. What? You more of a Firekeeper fan? What has she got that I don't? Woohoo, look at me. I can do a retarded little dance. Fuck you. Alright? I can do the cute little thing with my feet, you blind bitch. Anyways, I'm off to guide another miserable fuck. 
don't forget to subscribe and become a member, or whatever you do here. I'm out. <laughs>